in China, actually a material that's been used in bone china for years. So it, it's, it's not a, a new material, but utilizing this tubular structure is somewhat new. On this slide here, you can see the issues related to source in the sense that uh, the material on the left has some impurities of, of alunite in it, which is somewhat problematic if you're trying to use these tubes for reinforcement because those will, will create defects, whereas the material in source B, you can see very long tubes, higher aspect ratio than in the previous picture. Uh, with some amount of kaolin in it. The kaolin being much smaller is, is really much less of, a, of an issue. Just to give a sense of what we're trying to do in terms of creating this concentrate called Plexamer is to create something that is basically will feed into any injection molder. So really the trick with any nanomaterials is, is any, any nanomaterial getting it well dispersed. And so that's really what we bring to this, is we bring in that, that dispersion and provide a concentrate that anyone can work with, where with many nanoclays, it's a little bit of a problem in the sense that you need specialized equipment to get the separation of the layers, the exfoliation, and you need specialized chemistry to make all that happen, and, and we are providing this to, to the end user and, and coming up with something that's well dispersed. And because of this un, not needing to exfoliate, we're able to use this in, in a real wide range of polymers. Nanoclays have been focused a lot more in nylon and more recently in polypropylene.